Today, we're going to be talking about how I really didn't feel like making this video. Like, I, I genuinely didn't feel like making this video because I ate some, like, really fat, heavy, lethargic food, and it's a cloudy, windy, cold day outside, you know, and I was also feeling, like, just generally lazy a little bit about it. But here I am making it anyways, because I need to break out of, like, one of my old habits used to be, oh, I don't really feel like doing it, so therefore I'm not going to do it. This video is sort of like me kind of forcing myself to, to like break that old habit of mine to like do it, especially when I don't feel like doing it. And this isn't like the only case with me, all right? So one of my buds, I'm not gonna name him, but I'm gonna send him this video. And one of my buds is chronically like this too, where if he's in his comfort, he doesn't want to do anything even if it's we have like the whole squad to get to get to, if even if we have the whole squad get together right we have like one two three four people with us and he's going to be the fifth squad member a car full of everybody together we're going to go out and we're going to have a blast we're going to go drinking we're going to have a bonfire we're going to be on the beach we're going to have the sunset we're going to talk we're going to spit we're going to do all this fun stuff right and then he's comfortable so he's not going to go out of course, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. I'm not saying that you have to go out with your friends if they're outside, you know. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to make a point here. The point I'm trying to reel this into is that doing something that you don't feel like doing can be so empowering. And as a matter of fact, I'll let, I'll let you know right now, okay? Let me tell you something. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna tell you something, all right? This morning, I didn't feel like jogging. Now, every single day at 8.30 a.m. at my first shift job, I go on my first shift break. I run around um, a certain distance, all right? I have like four or five different little courses or probably even more, but I just essentially go however long I feel like going for, and I'll sit there and jog for however long I feel like jogging. Maybe it's down the first street, maybe it's down the third street, maybe I take a right down the street, maybe I head back the other way down the street and go around the curve. I don't know, it just depends on where I feel like going. But what I'm getting at here is that I didn't feel like really going all that far. I was just gonna take the first street, I was just gonna be going and I didn't really feel like going anywhere, all right? I didn't feel like jogging, I didn't feel like being outside. I just didn't feel like I wanted to go that far. But there is a very funny thing that happens in our head when we go out and we do something that we don't feel like we want to do in the moment. And we go out and challenge ourselves to do it anyway. So a funny little thing happens and clicks in our mind where we end up a majority of the time, we end up outpacing how we felt even on like days where you feel motivated to go out, like on days that I felt motivated to go the extra distance, I still didn't. Because in my head, I thought, okay, I'm feeling really good. I'm gonna go two miles in this 15 minutes today. I only went a mile and a half because I was so ready to go that I was like pushing myself harder in the beginning. And then I tired myself out too soon. So I couldn't. I guess I could have, but I, I felt physically like I couldn't without really hurting myself and like going back to my job and just being an absolute sweaty nightmare, you know? But a funny thing kind of like happened in reverse this morning when I went to go on my jog where I just felt like going down the first street, I was going to go like maybe a mile, a mile and a quarter or something in that 15 minutes, right? A funny little thing happened where when I passed the first street, I was still good. So then I'm still sitting there running and I go down to the second street and I'm still not that tired. I'm like, what is this? You know, so I'm sitting there now I'm in the, now I'm in the zone. It's like not even four minutes and I'm already a three quarters of a mile down, right? Like four minutes, I'm already three quarters of a mile. And I didn't feel like going jogging that far that morning. And in four minutes, I covered as much ground as I thought I was going to cover that entire break. 
I ended up jogging a grand total of 1.8 miles in that 15 minutes of my break. And I came back all fine. I didn't really feel like I was winded or anything. I mean, I was like, like breathing and trying to catch my breath and everything, but I wasn't exhausted. I wasn't winded. I wasn't like so out of it because that funny little thing in my brain kind of clicked and when I did it, because I didn't feel like doing it, but I did it anyways, because I'm trying to make it a habit, a funny thing clicked in my mind where I ended up just getting into the flow naturally, even though I didn't feel like doing it. And I even feel the effects now. We're only like five minutes into the video and all I've been talking about are my experiences. But I didn't feel like starting this because I ate lethargic food, I was fat, you know, I felt fat, lazy, it's cloudy outside, it's cold, whatever. But here I am, I'm starting to get into the motion and everything, right? Do you see how this works? The mind over matter psychology? It's so incredible. So that's why today's video topic is going to be about doing it even when you don't feel like doing it. So like I was saying with my friend, all right? My friend has like an absolute chronic laziness syndrome, okay? I mean like he goes out and does stuff, but on the days that he works, he takes like that whole day off. He doesn't want to do anything else. Now granted, he works part time. He works from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's it. And because that was his work day, he's going to now spend the rest of the day inside because, oh, I've already been at work today. I'm mentally exhausted from dealing with customers and putting stock away. And I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of pathetic, all right? Because you have worked four hours and you have easily at least 12 other hours out of the day to do your free time and do whatever and recover and relax. But you're gonna spend your whole 12 hours just relaxing in your house because of a four hour workday? That's kind of pathetic, all right? Because think about it, you got 12 hours and you're gonna spend all 12 of those hours not being productive towards something that's gonna set you up for a better future, right? I'll bet you anything right now, I bet you anything that he's already messaged me, what the fuck, bro? He's already messaged me, what the fuck? He hasn't even like finished this segment. He's not even like getting to the parts to where I'm telling all the good benefits about like how he thinks and acts and how he's still one of my best friends to this day because of that. Because we both share the same humor, the same morals, the same compasses, you know, the same um, friendship circle and everything. You know, so we're, we're still really good buds. But I bet you anything that he already clicked off and just messaged me because he doesn't like to be told that he's not shit, right? And that's part of like the ego in all of us that we have to settle down. We have to really lower our ego when it comes to true holistic self-improvement on our journey to have a better future, right? I had to do that back when I met my wife. Because when I was in a country that I'm not a native to, when I'm in a foreign country and I don't know the language, you can't afford to have an ego. <laughs> you know, you can't afford to have an ego and think that you're better than everybody else because you're not in your own country, bud. You're not in your own country. You're not even in your own state, let alone your own country, right? You're not from this neck of the woods. You can't afford to have an ego where you're not comfortable. So why is it so important that we let go of this little lizard ego brain that we got? Because when we think that we are at a higher level than what we actually are, it sets us up for a comfortable lifestyle. Like for the longest time I've been at this level where I thought I was like way up here because I was like, I'm gonna, okay. I know I said to let go of egos, but genuinely, unapologetically, I was the most successful person out of my entire friend group in terms of like finances and studies and grades and everything, right? I was the most successful student. 
and I'm sort of like how, depending on how you define success, because I know success isn't like an umbrella, one size fits all term. I know that. But I mean, in terms of like, I have my own house. I have a wife. I have my own car. She has her own car, but I bought it for her, right? I have literally everything that a middle class person would want to have. My None of my friends have that. So therefore, I've had this ego for the longest time that I'm way up here. When I'm really probably about here, and my friends are probably about here. Now there's not that much of a difference, honestly, even though it feels like I'm leagues ahead of them. Even though it feels like I'm leagues ahead of them, like I'm up here, they're down here. The reality is a lot closer. Like I'm up here, and maybe they're here, you know? They could easily jump up here within a year or two of work. It doesn't require that much work to get to where I am. The only reason why I am where I am now is because I worked my ass off and worked two to three jobs for like two to three years, okay? But it really isn't that big of a difference. When your mind is convincing you that you're here and other people are here, it is dangerous because it tricks you into thinking that you have resources that you don't, that you're secure when you're not, that you have freedom when you don't. When I realized that I wasn't as high on my high horse as I thought I was, I was a really, really, like, I don't really know how to describe the moment, but essentially it was while I was still in Vietnam and when I was meeting with my wife's family for the first time, and I realized that these are people here living their lives and I'm taking her away from her family and everything that she knows. And the ego death within me was in a moment when I was talking to her grandfather and I was saying like, bye to her grandfather. And then like, you know, he was sitting here grabbing my hand and everything and we can't really speak each other's languages, but he was like holding my arm really tight and he was trying not to cry and everything. And when I looked into that man's eyes, his soul, it made me realize that the next time that we come back to visit for Vietnam, he might not be there to see me again. So it wasn't that he was just saying, see you later. He was quite frankly, possibly saying goodbye. And I know that kind of seems irrelevant to realizing that I don't need an ego, but the reason that is, is because in order to actually keep my wife happy and bring her back to America, I had to be on very good terms with her family. I can't just like go there and just do whatever I want and act however I want and act like I have what I don't and make her family think that she's gonna be secure when she's not. That's just not right. It went against all my moral compasses to like lie about, oh yeah, I have this or that, or I'm way up here and everybody else is down here when that isn't the reality. So I want you to take a step back, all right? What I want you to do in this quick actionable step, just real quick, like if you're watching this video right now, go ahead and pause it. If you're watching it on a TV or a computer or a phone, just pause it right now. Well, not right now, but pause it after I tell you to do this. Pause the video and then stare at a wall. That's it. Just pause the video and stare at a wall for like 30 minutes to an hour. I know that sounds unbelievably boring. And most of you are probably not gonna do this. You're just gonna keep watching the video and that's fine, I don't care. But if you really wanna change your life and realize, like really, really think about where you are. If you're like me where you had an ego up here and your friends were down here, but the reality is they were this close and you didn't realize it, just take a moment to pause this video and stare at a wall for 30 to 60 minutes. Set a timer on your phone if you have to, do whatever you need to do, but without technology, without doing anything else, just stare at a wall and think, where am I actually, according to the facts, data, and statistics, where am I actually in the social hierarchy compared to my friends, my family, my own self image, and those that I, surround myself with essentially like any any um schoolmates or co-workers you know how am i compared to these other people around me in reality not in my mind in 
physical reality. Where am I in this social hierarchy that I have myself around? And I promise you that if you really sit back and stare at a wall and think about where you are in life right now, especially for your age, if, if you're like under 21 or something, then it's probably not going to be that much of a difference. But if you're like my age, 28, or you're in your 30s, and you're thinking you're way up here when in reality you're probably down here, just take a second. So if you went ahead and pause the video and now you're back, how do you feel where you are now? How do you feel where you thought you were compared to where you really are? Did you consider your finances, your housing environment, who you're living with, if you're living with anyone at all, um, where your neighborhood is, where your city is? There's all kinds of different things that you could have thought about while you were staring at that wall. If you thought about all these things and you came to realize that maybe I'm not the shit, then congratulations you can actually start to bring the process back and start to take the actionable steps that you need to truly, truly change your life for the better. And it really all does start with that ego death and fixing yourself up because you might not, like, even if you did think you were up here, it's not going to help you if you're trying to fix yourself, right? And I'm not saying fix as a one single term, like you need to fix yourself, otherwise you're broken to society. I'm not saying that. The term fix yourself, to me, means that you realize that you have either an issue, an addiction, a problem, or you're just trying to be a better person. You realize something is, you realize about something within you that you want to change for the better. Nobody told you that you need to do this. You decided on your own while you were looking at that wall that you wanted to change for the better. That is what this video is about. About doing it even when you don't feel like it. Because you have an ego up here, but in reality you're based down here. And when you really look at it, you realize that you need to take the actionable steps required for you to get up here. That's where I'm at right now. You know, I'm taking the steps that I need to do to get up here. And I'm kind of bringing you along with my journey. Sure, I'm telling you things that I have discovered. And I'm telling you my past history. But I'm also sharing with you what I want to do, where I want to be. I want to be way up here. Don't we all? Don't we all want to be way up here, way up here, off camera up here? But the reality is that not everybody wants to. Not everybody wants to do the things that are required for you to get way up here, way up there, wherever your level is. And if you're one of those people that's like still watching at this point and you're fine being here, you're fine with a five to nine part-time job and you're fine just being comfortable in your mama's house, going where she goes because you can't afford to make your own choices, then that's fine. You know, I'm not saying that you need to be your own independent unit and you need to be the master of the world and you need to have this much and everything. I'm not saying that you have to be. This video is ultimately, where do you want to be? If you're already here, then cool. But for people like me that want more in life, I want to be way up here. I'm fine, I'm comfortable here. Most of society is here, okay? I I consider myself to be like a step up because I don't have any debts. I have my own house and cars and everything and a wife, I'm married and everything, right? At 28, so right now at my age range, I feel like I'm right here. I truly analytically, fact data and statistically believe that I am here. This isn't ego or anything. I firmly believe that I am here compared to society at my age group, which is here. Now, you could argue with that. I understand. But I want to be way up here. I want to be the cream of the crop. I want to truly give my wife and my future kids a life that they will love. And if you're one of those people, then follow along with me for the journey. 
if you're fine just being here and you're comfortable, that's okay too. You don't have to move if you don't want to move. And that's where my friend that I've been referencing in this video this entire time, that's where he's at. He's comfortable and satisfied being at the level that he's at. He doesn't want to move up because he is fine here. He's fine just being on his PlayStation 5, climbing into Masters on Overwatch and getting 99 crafting and whatever else on RuneScape, right? He's fine here. He is comfortable here. He doesn't want to move anywhere else because he doesn't want any more status or money. You know, he doesn't want that right now. Maybe in the future when he finds a woman that he truly cares about, that he falls in love with, when he marries, when he has kids, maybe in the future that'll change. But right now he's fine here. And I've asked him about that several times. I'm like, are you sure you don't want to go scale up the ladder with me? And he's like, no, no, I'm fine here. I'm, just, I'm comfortable, man. You know, I'm, I'm just fine eating my apple cinnamon pancakes. <laughs> he's not like me. You know, he loves to support me. He loves to like, uh, at least he says, I mean, you know, I don't know. He, my, the last 20 years of friendship that I've had with him could all be lies. I don't know. But he says that he likes to just stay here and he doesn't mind if I scale up, right? I'm thinking that he thinks I'm going to bring him along for a free ride. But realistically, if he doesn't move up here too in the future when I do, I don't think I'm going to be friends with him like 10 years from now then because... That's another thing that needs to happen that I've come to realize with a lot of old friends that I've had that I didn't really truly connect and click with on a lot of different... Now, I'm not saying that you have to find people that you agree with everything. That's not right. And I firmly believe, actually, that we need to have friends that combat us and have different values in some areas. I feel like I've gone way off topic with this video, like... Originally, this video was supposed to just be about, I don't feel like doing it, therefore I'm not doing it mentality, but it turned into this whole different thing. So I don't even know if like, I mean, it, it would be a waste of like the last 30 minutes of video recording, but eh, nah, you know what? I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to keep going with the topic that I've developed. You know, this is now a brand new free unscripted video. Like even look here. All right. So I have a whole script right here. I was going to like have the main topic be, I don't feel like doing it today, right? But I guess I'm just going off, I'm just free balling it now. So let's free ball. You know what, yeah, let's free ball. We're gonna officially close this and we're setting it down. Free ball. So the friends that you bring with you and the friends that you surround yourself with should be challenging in some ways. I have another friend that's like this, all right? He's always been about this. He's always like he's always felt that he's a true Heoka in the purest form of sense, right? He's truly connected to nature and spiritual beliefs and, you know, the human embodiment, you know, true absolutely raw inner self energy, right? He's into all that. And for the longest time, I wasn't. I was not into any of that shit. Like it was just stupid to me. What do you mean chakras and alignments and frequencies and energies? You know, I, I don't care about any of that. I just care about, you know, finances and real estate and, you know, actual grounded facts, data and statistics type of stuff, right? But him and I kind of like have a very rotating friendship where we constantly challenge each other's beliefs, not in a toxic way, but in a very, very healthy way, where we kind of like not try to change the beliefs of someone else, because that's not what you want to do when you're debating someone is you don't want to tell them that they have to think the way that you think or they're wrong, because that is the wrong way to think. What you need to do when you have a friendship, a healthy friendship group that challenges ideas, is that you want them to think about your perspective on something, and they want you to think about their perspective on things. A prime example of this is spirituality. My friend that I'm referencing right now 
is so heavy into the Hayoka status about true inner spirituality. And for the longest time, I didn't care about that. But he's currently on a soulful soul discovery journey. And he's been traveling across America. I think he's been to like six or seven different states, right? When he comes back, I DM'd him when I came back from Vietnam from visiting our family, right? I DM'd him like that same week that I was back in America. I want to try shrooms with you for the first time, bro. I want to experience this frequency with you. So this is going to be like my first time trying shrooms in like another month or something. But I want to experience like a limited amount of understanding on where he stands. And similarly, he wants to learn more about like being financially fiscal, about like ways to make money outside of just a standard nine to five job, about physical regimen, about keeping a rigid schedule. You know, he wants to figure things out with me. I want to figure things out with him. And together through this friendship, we can consistently exchange ideas and values and thoughts between each other. And so we both become a better person from each other's presence. And I firmly believe that that is a truly, the truly the best way to have a proper friend. And you should surround yourself with at least three to four others that do this with you, right? And I'm talking about like it, of your particular gender group or sex group, or however you want to identify, all right? Because when you have a whole group of people that are all pushing each other to do better, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful. And I promise that if you actually go out into the world with a purpose to find these kind of people, you're going to find them within two years, a year, all right? You just have to go out there and put in the work. All right, so let's actually wrap around to how exactly you can go about doing the thing that you don't feel like doing, right? Because it doesn't matter if you don't feel like doing it and you truly want to do it, but sometimes it just doesn't matter because you genuinely don't feel like doing it because then you think about, oh, I gotta go do this thing, then I gotta go do this thing, then this thing, then this thing. You overwhelm your brain within the moment that you think about, I gotta do all these things and you're making it too complicated. So one of the things that I like to do that originally got me out of that little rut of I got to do all these things <laughs> is to take things just one baby step at a time. And just like in the Shrek movie, you remember the Shrek movie when like Shrek's pushing Donkey on the bridge will go one little baby step at a time, right? So what you need to do is like, if you think, oh, I need to go on a walk and then I need to do dishes and then I need to do laundry and then I need to do recording and then I need to do video editing and then I need to do this. And that all sounds like a lot. So now I'm not gonna do anything because it sounds overwhelming. What you need to do is you need to let go of everything else except the first thing that comes to mind. What is the first thing that comes to mind? Do it now. Only one thing. What is the very first thing that comes to mind? Do it right now. And then while you're doing the very first thing that comes to mind, while you're going on the walk outside, what's the next thing that immediately comes to mind? What are you going to do? The one thing that you're going to do when you get home, do laundry. Cool. So now you're walking around and you're thinking about where should I put my laundry? You know, like, okay. And then you get overwhelmed again. So that's a bad example. <laughs> but just think about when I get home, I'm going to do laundry. Don't think about or focus on any of the extra stuff. Just focus on when I get home, I'm going to do laundry. And then when you get home and you start putting your laundry away, you think, next I'm going to do dishes. And you repeat this baby, baby, baby step. You don't think about all the things that you need to do. You just focus on the one thing that you do need to do next. Whatever it is, just get up and do the one thing. It's going to set up a chain reaction of things that you can do to push yourself in the right direction, to do the things that you didn't feel like doing. And now, before you know it, it's only been two hours and you've done something that would normally take you two weeks. Isn't that fucking cool? That's so cool. I mean, I'm hyping it up for you because it's honestly really, really dope when you can 
do stuff in a matter of hours that you would have done in days or weeks. When you apply this one-step principle and simplify your life, it makes things, well, simpler because you're not overcrowding thoughts in your mind. But okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that you're still not doing it. Let's say you're still watching this video and you didn't immediately head out that door and go on that walk, or you didn't immediately go into the other room and do your laundry. You're still watching this because you want something to do. You're bored. You can't put your phone down. You can't get off your desktop. Whatever the case may be. Let's say that you're stuck. You're truly stuck, all right? What I want you to do then is to put your phone on silent mode. You can like scroll up from the bottom of the phone and you can put on silent mode, right? And then physically turn your phone off. Don't even listen to music. Don't listen to music or anything that requires you to open the screen to maybe skip a song or skip an ad. Because then you're back on your phone and now you're back on the thing that may, that's distracting you from doing stuff. Just go and do something. Don't worry about the steps involved. Don't worry about, do I have to do this or that? Right? It's just as simple as putting your phone down, putting whatever is distracting you from what you really want and need to do. And just doing it, right? It's really simple. And yes, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say, well, maybe you're depressed right now, or maybe you have a really high anxiety because you're thinking like, if I go outside, it's going to be cold and then I'm going to get sick. You know, we can't control those, those anxious, invasive thoughts. I've been there in my life where I've had severe anxiety, where I've had invasive thoughts constantly, and it drains you. It actually makes you physically feel drained because you constantly have to fight in your head about off all these thoughts. But I'm telling you that the vicious cycle stops when you actually put your mind focused on a task, whether it's walking whether it's doing laundry, whether it's anything that you're doing, if you focus your mind on something, it makes those distracting, intrusive thoughts so much harder to actually invade your head. I promise you, please just trust me and go do something. I know I'm harping on this for like five minutes now, but it's so important that you take that first step, you put your phone on silent, you put it down, and you just go do what you need to do, right? And just the one thing, don't think about everything all at once, just do the one thing, and then think about the next thing that you need to do while you're doing your current thing. That's it. Newton's law of an object in motion tends to stay in motion, but an object at rest tends to stay at rest. That's true with you too. So just take the first take the first step to doing something. That's exactly that habit that you build of just doing it when you when you don't feel like doing it. You build that habit and then eventually that habit turns into a ritual where you just do it because it's a habit that you built up to be positive to where I feel like doing it because it's a habit. Because now if I don't do it, it feels wrong. It feels like I need to be doing something. You're, you eventually, over the course of many months and maybe even over the course of years, rephrase your brain using this kind of thinking and it actually makes you enjoy doing the things that were a chore before. That's wild. That's sick. That is so cool. Okay, so let's now play an extreme example. Let's say even after all this, even after all my convincing that if you don't feel like doing it because your phone's distracting, or maybe let's say that you don't even know what you want to do. You're watching this right now because you don't even know what you want to do. Here's something that you can do. And this is going to be the hardest fucking thing that you can do. Once again, turn, pause this video and stare at a wall. I told you to do this earlier for the ego death, right? But chances are the people who have already like clicked off and everything, they watched the video and they tried not and it didn't work. So then they've just clicked off this video, okay? If you're already this far, it means you've already done the ego death step, right? Just like with the ego death, all right? You need to lower, just pause the video, stare at a wall for 15 minutes. What do you want to do? Do you want to get back, get back on your phone? No, you're not allowed. Stare at a wall. What are you going to do? If you're going to go insane from staring at that wall, then it really requires you to think. 
Like maybe eventually you're gonna get distressed from it and then you're gonna get back on your phone because that's comfortable. And in that case, I don't really know how I can help you because unfortunately, like the way that I've always done it is that when I don't know what I wanna do, I just stare at a wall and I just think. And then I think about the first thing that I wanna do. Uh, maybe I'll go outside for a walk. Go out for a walk. It, it truly isn't that hard. I mean, if, if you really just want to do something, just try it, okay? Just give it a try. Oh, maybe you've done it before and it didn't work. Well, nothing real, there is very, very few circumstances where something works the first time. You know the old saying, Rome wasn't built in a day? Your mind doesn't get fixed in a day. Your soul doesn't feed itself in a day, right? Nothing that we do happens in a single day. It, the online space has been so micro-consumed that seconds go by, right? And it doesn't feel like seconds, it feels like minutes, and the day drags on and on. The internet happens so fast that it's killed your ability to do things slow. And the speed of life is very, very slow. But you need to be able to process things at the speed of life. And if you can't do that, you're not ever going to be able to fix the things that you want to fix within yourself. You need to be able to take that step back and just do the first step of anything that you want to do. Anything, just try it. Try it for a week, two weeks, a month. Even if it doesn't work the first day, the second day, the third day, try, just keep doing it. If it still doesn't work after a month, comment below. If it doesn't work after a month, comment below, tell me I was wrong, boo me, give me a dislike, and move on, all right? Because then this isn't about you. Just straight up, this isn't about you if you continuously con convince yourself and cope and say, oh, it's not working. Then maybe you thought it was for you and then it still wasn't working. And you've tried all these steps. Go seek an actual therapist then, straight up. Because this channel is about building people up. I am here to help people reach their highest potential. And I'm here to help you go along the journey with me to my highest potential. And I want to bring other people up here too, right? So if you can't do that and you've tried for a month and you really truly haven't been able to change anything about your life, find a professional therapist and go through them because I'm not a therapist. I'm just a dude on YouTube. So I guess with my closing thoughts, with that kind of condescending message out of the way, I really do hope that this video has kind of opened your eyes onto this massive issue of not doing something when you don't feel like it. If you're a chronic, oh, I don't feel like doing anything, so I'm not going to do it, er, then I seriously suggest that you at least rewatch the first 40 minutes of this video and just give things a try again. Just keep trying to build those positive habits. They are hard. You're going to sometimes slip up. You're going to sometimes fail. You're going to sometimes have a setback. But the beautiful thing about those particular issues is that when you move past them and you continue to push past those setbacks, those roadblocks, those emotions that you feel like it's not working, when you push past those, I'm sorry, when you push past those and you really actually start to see the changes in your mind, in your body, in your soul, in your heart, when you feel those changes, it reflects around every single day. And you feel it around you. Other people feel it from you. And you set yourself up to have a beautiful, wonderful future for yourself and your wife and your kids or your husband and your kids. So feel free to subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like or a dislike, depending on how you feel it helps you. And I know I've said ignore your feelings. I'm not telling you to ignore your feelings, but if this video truly has helped you, give it a like. If it hasn't helped you, give it a dislike. Any engagement helps. It helps have other people reach this. So if you so if you like share this video and subscribe to it, it gives it more engagement, which means that other people can see it so they can improve their lives and then it benefits me because then I can continue making this content and it becomes a positivity positivity backfeed loop. All right, we're all in this together. So let's go on the journey together, right? I look forward to seeing you return to my channel. And I look forward to seeing all the successes that you're gonna have in life. Have a great day, okay?